are watching MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network and FightNetwork.com. I am Gabriel Morenci. Uh, let's uh, do this thing. Let's shake things up a little bit uh, this week. We know that there's a ton of UFC cards from now until the end of the year. It's been a marathon since that UFC 205. I think there's uh, 10 cards scheduled uh, up until uh, the new year. They're coming fast and furious. Of course, we've got the, uh, the tough finale uh, this weekend, UFC 206, the much maligned UFC 206. It's actually a pretty kick-ass card uh, when you when you break it down. Uh, so and we got a ton of fights, but uh, there's there's more uh, more to the world of MMA than just uh, the UFC. And the UFC Fight Pass has done a great job of uh, reaching out and exposing other mixed martial arts organizations to uh, UFC fight fans around the world. And one of those organizations is Victory FC. We're now joined by the president of Victory FC, Ryan Stoddard. Ryan, welcome to MMA Meltdown. How you doing, man? Hey, man. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm actually a, a huge fan of the Fight Network and, and your show, and uh, uh, it's a privilege to finally be on. Hey, well, I appreciate uh, you taking the time to be with uh, be with us on the on the program. And thanks to the kind words. You had a fight network uh, does a great job in bringing uh, bringing fights and exposing different organizations uh, to fight fans. And now UFC Fight Pass uh, as well. And I remember years ago, and Victory FC, you guys have been in business for like 15 years now. And I remember years ago, that was the, you know, the, the knock uh, on the UFC, that you know, they had the Microsoft sort of uh, way of doing business. You know, we were going to crush everybody else. We're going to sign every fighter, and we're not going to expose uh, other companies. But that really couldn't be further from the truth when you look at Fight Pass and them giving all these different organizations, such as yourself, a major uh, platform. How much is the relationship with Fight Pass uh, meant for your company? Oh, it's been huge, you know. It, it, the, the UFC is running Fight Pass like, very much so like a, an actual network. You know, I mean, they they definitely uh, keep tabs on us, and and uh, you know, there 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 are requirements that we must follow, so on and so forth. But for the most part, they let each product come in and, and do what they want, and um, it, it in my opinion, that that really makes for the survival of the fittest. So we've we've been able to come in, you know, work our our butts off for the last uh, well since January, so eleven months, and uh, you know, rise to the top of the shows on Fight Pass and. Um, you know, we're just honored that the UFC would, would has given us that uh, ability and, and platform, and, and we've we've tried to make the most of it. And the fans have noticed, and uh, it's it's been a great experience thus far, and, a, and, a, and truly an amazing relationship. Now, when people think of fight towns, they don't think of Omaha, Nebraska. You know, that that's not the first fight town that comes to mind. But when I think of the Midwest, and I think of Midwest fighters. They're just like farm tough, you know what I mean? They're all just freaking tough. And you've had so many of these tough guys come through your organization. You know, Josh the Dentist near one of the toughest guys ever to fight in any organization. The Allenberger uh, brothers. You've had Benson Henderson uh, come through the company. What is it about the Midwest, man, that provides these just tough-ass dudes? Well, you know, it's funny you say that about Omaha because it, it really is very much a fight city. Um, there's, there's so many fighters that are from here that have been through the UFC. Um, you know, Jeremy Horn was born and raised here. Uh, Steve Jenham, who won UFC three, maybe was it, was, was a police officer in Omaha, Nebraska at the uh, time yeah. of, of him winning. He still lives here. Uh, you know, currently right now we have Terrence Crawford, who is the WBO, uh, uh, champion in, uh, I think two or three weight classes. So Omaha is very much so a fight city. Um, it, but the problem is, is it's, it's Omaha. <laughs> well, that's it. It's a fight city. You guys know that, but the rest of America doesn't know that, right? <laughs> but but we've been able to play some great guys in the UFC over the years. You know, you talk about Josh Neer, and you go back through the history of victory, even before I owned it. You know, there was a a, a fight, I want to say it was on, like, VFC 4 or 5, and it was Josh Neer versus Spencer Fisher. And, and uh, Sheerdog did an article once called The Five Best Fights You've Never Seen. Really? And, yeah, and that yeah. fight... That fight was listed in there because it was legitimately, you know, to this day, Jake Ellenberger still tells me it was the best fight he's ever seen. It was those two for five rounds just trying to take each other out. Um, you know, I, I've seen videos of it. I, I wasn't there live, but I've, I've heard, you know, all the stories and the fanfare. And, um, you know, over the years, 
between great fights like that and producing, you know, athletes like the Ellenberger brothers, you know, currently Mursad Bektik is in the UFC uh, making some noise. Yeah. You know, you have Drew, Drew Dober. And then, in fact, our first fight pass broadcast was supposed to be Anthony Smith versus Elvis Mutapic, which is happening this weekend on the tough finale. Uh, Elvis got pulled up to the UFC and then Anthony beat Josh Neer and then he got called up. So that must so, make you feel good then, right, when you see a fight that you booked in the UFC. <laughs> You know what? There's right now. There's actually two big fights happening here in the near future. One, one in the UFC, one in Bellator. And I originally booked them earlier this year, and now they're taking place in large organizations. So, um, well, you know, you're doing it, something it, right, then, Ryan. Right? <laughs> so, you know, you know, you're doing something at, right. <laughs> at, at the end of the day, I'm a fight fan. You know, I I look at um, our shows and our broadcasts, and I I think that my I, I like to go out and try to find unique talent. Um, you know, Mursad Bektik was a kid. I walked into the gym that he was training out here in Omaha. Uh, he was 18 years old. He looked like a, a, a love child of GSB and, and Shogun Hua. And I instantly knew that that kid was something special. Um, and, and look at him now, still undefeated, one of the top uh, up-and-coming featherweights in the UFC. So uh, I, 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 I like thinking I have an eye for talent and being able to cultivate that talent and bring it up, but I'm also a fight fan. I know what people want to see because I know what I would want to see. And that's really how we run our shows on Fight Pass. You know, we take out all the fluff. We give people seven, eight, nine great fights. And from top to bottom, we just we just go through and, and, and try to give them the, the meat and potatoes of what people want to watch. You know, I mean, so if you tune into our shows on Fight Pass, you know you're going to get two, three hours of solid, solid fights and nothing else. So you've got uh, you've got a couple of cards uh, actually coming up before the end of the year, right? Uh, December the ninth, and then one right before Christmas. Yeah, we we uh, it was purely by accident that we ended up having our our three fights in thirty days campaign. Uh, originally, the December twenty third card was scheduled for November fourth, but then once TKO signed on with the UFC, um, the we worked with the UFC to move our date to make sure that they had a, a very successful uh, debut, and it just kind of happened that it's three shows 30 days you know we just had a bst 53 last weekend um which was a fantastic card uh sold out venue in, in waterloo iowa we're going into december 9th for 54 with two title two title fights on that one and then bst 55 uh december 23rd so um it, it's it's been a, a rough couple months getting into it but but now that we've prepared thus far it, it the shows are actually happening pretty smoothly considering you know, the size of, of our company and, and, and trying to piece together three events of this size uh, in that short of time. So I'm, I couldn't be happier with the people I work with. I couldn't be any happier with the with the athletes we have on our roster and our production team. And, um, you know, we're looking to close out 2016 the way we, we uh, kicked off 2016, you know, with, uh, with some fireworks. Now, before we let you go, as we're conversation with Ryan Stoddard, president of Victory FC, uh, before before we let you go, I know that uh, you have some interest in putting on a card uh, in Canada, and you said in the, in the central Canada uh, area. When you say that, is that like Alberta, Saskatchewan, uh, maybe Manitoba? You know, MFC uh, was very successful in Alberta over the years. Uh, they had uh, some strong fighters also competing in the UFC now, um, not around anymore. There seems to be a big void out there in western and central Canada. And, you know, as far as eastern Canada is concerned... Great fight market in Ontario, uh, but uh, think twice before trying to do a card in Ontario, all right? You need a lot of money and jump through a lot of freaking hoops. I guess as you start to branch out, you're going to start to deal with new athletic commissions, right? <laughs> right. That's always the fun the fun thing. Um, you know, initially we wanted to uh, uh, branch into Canada in early 2017. We're, it looks like we're going to try to push that off to late 2017, but yeah. Um, you know, Winnipeg, Saskatoon, Regina, um, you know, I had a couple conversations with Mark Pavlich who, you know, I, I, as a promoter truly believe I'm, I'm one of the few, you know, red blooded promoters in the sport, you know, an individual who, you know, I, I didn't, nobody gave me a big checkbook and said, here, go start this promotion. You know, I, I bought victory. I built it from, from, you know, what I considered scratch at the point I, I took it over and, and, and changed some things. And, you know, I've, I've come through that grassroots level to get our TV deal and, and really build it up. And I have a lot of admiration for guys like Mark Pavlich and Scott Coker and, um, 
you know, even Dana White and some of the people in the UFC, the way they, they help build and cultivate the sport. Um, so I've had a couple conversations with Mark about Edmonton, and, and, and you know, uh, I see a, a very, very bright future for victory in that market as well as throughout the central part of Canada. And hopefully eventually the Ontario Commission starts to relax. I've never dealt with them personally. I'm, I'm just going by complete hearsay, but I, I've heard it, it, it can be tough to do events there. And um, as we continue to grow and expand, I, I, I look at basically from Kansas straight up, swapping through a couple states throughout the central part of Canada. Um, you know, that's that's where we would like to be, and that's, those are the markets we'd like to come in and, and be successful in. And um, I like to try to create a, a schedule throughout the year as a sort. You know, here in the Midwest, we have a, a real problem with college football. You know, here in Nebraska, the, the Nebraska Cornhuskers are everything from, from August until the end of November. So you can't do any shows around here during that time, including Iowa, Kansas, some of these other places. Yeah, um, you got to so, be yeah, real careful, on a, especially if you're holding a card on a Saturday. That's, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, so we're looking at Canada as a, as a huge piece of, of our future. Um, you know, everybody up there is so wonderful. Um, you know, our publicist uh, used to work with Mark. Scott Zer has been one of the nicest human beings um, I could have ever worked with thus far. And, and I'm seeing a trend amongst all Canadians that you, you guys are just terrific human beings. And, um, you know, that you guys are massive fans of the sport. You, you crave a good show, and, and uh, I hope victory is that show. And, and uh, as you see us start to, you know, make our moves, where we want to sign more and more Canadian athletes and um, bring them down here uh, into the Midwest and then, you know, also utilize our, our American athletes up in Canada and um, continue to build athletes from, from, from both nations. Uh, and uh, see them grow and, and be successful in the UFC. Yeah, and create rivalries uh, as well. There's such a natural a natural pipeline. There's so many great Canadian fighters, uh, up-and-coming Canadian uh, fighters and veteran fighters uh, right now that are uh, always looking uh, for a fight uh, as well. Uh, continued success, uh, Ryan, man. Uh, great, uh, great stuff. Congratulations on the TV deals, the UFC uh, fight pass uh, deals. And, uh, you know, I know you got your work cut out for you in the next uh, couple of weeks. No holidays uh, for the Stoddard family uh, over the next uh, couple of weeks. They're putting on two cards on the 9th and the 23rd. You can see them both on the UFC Fight Pass. Ryan Stoddard, Victory FC, thanks for joining us, man. Hey, thank you. And, and the one last thing I'll say to any fans listening to this interview, tune in December 9th or December 23rd. Tweet with us. Use, use the hashtags for the event. We're, we're, we're very responsive. Tell us what you think. I, I can almost guarantee you won't be disappointed if, if you take the time to tune in and watch our event. And uh, um, hopefully we make some, some new Canadian fans at, at, through the process. I'm sure you will. Ryan Stoddard, Victory FC. Thanks for the time, man. Hey, thank you.